Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x plus y plus z equals 15 and x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 75. And we're going to be solving for x, y, and z values. So we only have two equations. What happens if you have two equations and three variables? Maybe there are infinitely many solutions. Maybe there are no solutions. Let's see what happens. I'll be presenting two methods. I'm also going to be showing you a graph in Desmos that you can kind of play around with, which will give you some idea what is going on here. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to use what is commonly known um, as algebra and square the first equation because we have the sum of squares, so it only makes sense to square x plus y plus z. When you square x plus y plus z, you get the following, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and then you get the 2xy, the 2xz, and the 2yz, which you can write uh, with a common factor of 2xy plus xz plus yz. So this is an identity when xyz uh, are added and squared, you get something like this. Now this is good because we do know x plus y plus z, that is 15, right? So this is 15. We also know their sum of squares, which is 75. Nice. Now let's go ahead and square 15. From here, we, we're basically going to find the two-way sums, xy plus xz plus yz. So if you square 15, you get 225, and then that is equal to 75 plus 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. If you subtract 75, you get 150. And if you divide by 2, you get half of 150, 75. Okay, great. I mean, you can do that. It's easy. It's just two steps, but I didn't show the both, uh, both steps. So this gives you 75. So what? We have three equations now. Let's rewrite them. We have x plus y plus z equals 15, we have x, y, x, z, y, z equals 75, and we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 75. Now you have three equations and three unknowns, so that kind of looks like a normal system, but the problem is if you just try to solve this with the three equations, you're kind of going around in circles. So we have to do something smarter, and this is what it looks like. So this is kind of like a very special scenario where you have the x squared plus y squared plus z squared being equal to xy plus xz plus yz. So let's go ahead and write that down as a different equation. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the same as xy plus xz plus yz. And this is significant. Why? Let me tell you why. We're going to put everything on the same side. We're going to manipulate this a little bit. And then at the end, we're going to arrive at a very interesting result. For my second method, I'm going to totally use a different approach. But before, uh, I'm also going to show you a graph. Anyways, let's go ahead and um, manipulate this. We can put everything on the same side. So subtract this sum. Set it equal to 0. Now, in order to get some perfect squares from the left-hand side, we're going to complete the squares, but we do need the right coefficients. And we need a 2 in front of the xy. Because if you have x squared minus 2xy, yes, we can complete the square. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2, which wouldn't hurt the whole thing, right? Because it's still 0. Now we get 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2z squared minus 2xy minus 2xz minus 2yz equals 0. So this is nice because now I can go ahead and break this down. 2x squared, I can write it as x squared and then take the negative 2xy and then just attach a y squared. So I also use one of the y squared. And then I can just do this with x squared again because I have 2x squared minus 2xz. Now I want to use one of the z squared. So that's going to give me this. And now what is left? We have the y squared minus 2yz plus z squared equals 0. If you add these all up, you're going to get 2x squared, which is this one. 2x squared plus 2y squared, so on and so forth. So these equations are equivalent, but this second one is much, much better because take a look at this. This is a perfect square 
this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, and everything is perfect. Everything is awesome. All right, so now we can write it as x minus y quantity squared, x minus z quantity squared, and y minus z quantity squared. And that is equal to zero. And what does that tell you? If x, y, z are real numbers, wait a minute, did I say they are real numbers? Well, you can also look for complex solutions, but I'm going to find the real deal. So if x, y, z are real, then you can only get a sum from, you can only get a zero by adding squares if each one is a zero, right? Because think about it. Uh, you can get a squared plus b squared is equal to zero, and either a and b are both zero, or one of them has to be positive, the other one has to be negative. But b squared cannot be negative in the real world, therefore everything has to be zero. So, and of course, the three variables won't make a difference. So this has to be zero, this has to be zero, and this has to be zero. Because their squares have to be zero, but it means they're zero. So from here, you get the following, x equals y, y equals z, x equals z, which means x equals y equals z. And this is a very important result because this is where we come from. Remember that, right? So whenever you have this equality, that means x, y, z are all equal. And think about it. If x and y are equal, x, y becomes x squared or y squared or z squared, right? So that's a really cool result. If they're all equal, then and there we know that their sum is 15. So each number is going to be 5, 5, and 5. And that is the end of the first method. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. The second method is kind of different. And for the second method, I'm going to show you a graph. But before that, let's go ahead and manipulate this. Okay? We have x plus y plus z is equal to 15. From here, I would like to isolate z, or x plus y, rather. I can write x plus y as 15 minus z. And I know that their sum, the squares of their sum, is 75. So from here, I can isolate x squared plus y squared and write it as 75 minus z squared. Great. What does that give you? A system of equations in two variables. Forget about the z. Z is a parameter. We're just going to play with it. Now, remember the identity, uh, which is x plus y squared equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Oops, there's no z. Never mind. Plus 2xy. Get carried away. Now, x plus y is 15 minus z, so we're going to square that. x squared plus y squared it can be written as 75 minus z squared plus 2xy. Now from here we can solve for xy, right? 15 minus uh, z squared is 225 minus 30z plus z squared. And then you can just go ahead and bring these over and then isolate the 2xy. And if you simplify this a little bit, you're going to get uh, 150 minus 30z plus 2z squared. Let's go ahead and write down 2z squared first. And maybe I'm just going to follow it up with the 30z so we can write it in the, you know, standard form, right? Plus 150. This is equal to 2xy. If you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get xy, which can be written as z squared minus 15z plus 75. Now we're going to use Vieta's formulas. Why? Because we know xy and we know x plus y. So we can kind of write the equation whose roots are x and y. Let's use a different variable like t, right? I like t, by the way. I don't know if you like it. If you like it, uh, comment down below. Uh, t squared minus 15 minus z, t plus z squared minus 15, z plus 75. This is an equation whose roots are x and y, but notice that this is the um, opposite of the sum that comes in here, and this is the product from Vieta's formulas, right? And what am I going to look at? I'm going to find the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. And this is going to give you something very interesting. Take a look. This is 225 minus 30z plus z squared minus 4z squared plus 60z minus 300. Okay, this is going to give you z squared minus 3, 4z squared is going to give you negative 3z squared. And then you're going to get negative 30 plus 60z. That's going to be uh, positive 30z. And then finally, you have the 225 minus 300, which is negative 75. And guess what? You can take out a 3, negative 3, I mean z squared minus 10z plus 25, and this becomes equivalent to z minus 5 quantity squared. This is obviously always less than or equal to 0, and it's 
can't be happening because we're looking for z real solutions, but delta cannot be negative. Discriminant, right? So you want it to be zero at least. This means delta is zero. We want to have real solutions, and this means z equals five. If you plug it in, you get x equals five and y equals five. Let me go ahead and show you what the graph looks like, and we're just going to play with it, and you're going to see the end result. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So here's our graph in Desmos. I graphed x plus y equals 15 minus z and x squared plus y squared equals 75 minus z squared. Don't worry about the z value, it's just where I paused it. But when I start playing it, you're going to notice something interesting. Let me know what you observe. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. Notice that as the z values change, like range between negative 10 and 7, by the way, you can change the range if you want, we have a circle and a straight line. And they happen to get closer and closer. At some point, they touch, but then the circle gets closer, uh, circle gets smaller, and then they can't cross each other. There's only one way they can intersect, and that is the point of tangency. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.